Okay, so you can continue. Created geo cosmetics that aim to deliver actionable customer uh, consumer rich uh, rich result to help regional teams tweak product. So they are creating some new products yes. in the local markets. Yes. So the regional team. Tweaking means regional teams means changing, changing the product. So they are creating some new product in the local market, right? Something else. Adapting global markets, uh, global products to local markets by uh, developing local innovations to roll out. Uh, regionally or globally, where appropriate. So it's similar to this one. They develop local innovations, yes. and then they can roll them out globally. So not only are we uh, customizing or adapting our product for the market, we're also making a new product, developing new products in the local market with the help of the local people and then if it's a good product we can sell this product in other countries too right okay anything else in this part yes. is this important part do you think is this focused on the problem or not focused on the problem what was the problem we guessed in the last class did you write down what was the problem Anybody tell me? They want to get bigger in emerging markets. Yes. And what's the challenge for them? There are some risks connected to this. Mm -hmm. Especially what risk? What's the main challenge? Uh, yes. These days, what do customers want more? Do they want it? What's the trend? Do customers want a more customized product or do they want more standardized products? these days, generally. What do you want, your consumers? Do you want more customized product and attention from companies or more standardized products? Customized products, right? And attention. So L'Oreal has this issue where they're a big global company, but these days people want more customization, right? Towards their needs or so on. So, uh, and they want to grow in emerging markets. So they have that kind of challenge. So this part, on the heading is local consumer understanding. Is that relevant to our problem or not relevant? Very relevant, right? We said that L'Oreal's challenge is that even though they're a global company, people want more and more customization these days, right? So it's hard to do for a very big company. So how are they going to do that, right? So we can see that they are creating new products in the local markets, right? So we can write this down in the, uh, you can write this down in our, if you want, you can do on online or else just uh, on your paper. Under this is qualitative information. <clears throat> so we can see some part here, if you look at local consumer understanding, on the one, two, three, four, five, six line, we can read the exploration of new scientific and technological territories is being enriched by this global dimension. Knowledge of different cultures and rituals worldwide enables the laboratories to anticipate and invent the products of the future. So, they're using, do you understand laboratory? What is a laboratory? You do research and development in a laboratory, right? Yes. Where is where is their laboratory? Is their laboratory only in their headquarter? No. No, why not? What does it say here? Why not? 
What do they want to get by having their laboratories in the local area? Because local information also needs research and development headquarters information. Yeah, so what advantage do they get by doing their R&D in the local area? Mm -hmm. Having their laboratory in the local area? More getting variety information. Yes, so in this, what does it say in the sentence that I just read? The sixth or seventh sentence under local consumer understanding, what does it say? It says, knowledge of different cultures and rituals worldwide enables the laboratories to anticipate and invent the products of the future. Do you understand that sentence? Are you re reading that sentence in the case study? Do you know where we are? Look at local consumer understanding and scroll down to si sentence number six. Okay? So, they have local laboratories. Why? They want the knowledge of knowledge of rituals and local rituals and cultures. Do you think that, do you agree with the CEO that the knowledge of the local ritual and culture is important when you're developing new products? Hmm? Or just, yes. you can just develop your new products anywhere. You can make an R&D center in the US and just develop your new products in the US. What do you think? The first one is better, especially for this kind of product, consumer product. Okay, so like skincare or so on. So we can continue to read this quote from the CEO. He says that uh, globalization was a thing of the past, especially in, in beauty. It is clear that people on different continents have their own specific needs, habits, dreams, and desires. So one product or one formula does not fit all. Okay, so we said that for marketing, customization is the idea. The more customization, the better for our marketing, right? But financial people might not, they think we need some standardization to save some money, right? But he thinks that nowadays, it may have been in the past that 20 or 30 years ago, there was more standardization, but nowadays it's going back again to uh, more customization. So we ha they have this system to make sure they're developing the products. Uh, for example, they give the example of Garnier Men, which was developed in India in 2009, and then it spread to the rest of Asia. Okay? So they developed the product in India, then they could sell it in the rest of Asia. So brand diversity is the next part. Who was reading about brand diversity? Okay, what kind of tell us here? Uh, well, as every brand, they have three different kinds of uh, customers, low, low, mid, and high end. Yes. Um, but L'Oreal, mm, no, maybe not invented, but developed uh, the special market, mm. uh, and they called it Mastiche, which mm. is a combination of words prestige and ma masses, which okay. means that there is a prestige for masses. So. Many people can afford the high quality products and basically it's about luxury products um, for you know a price range for mid middle market. So they offer like they make the middle market feel that they can afford really high quality products. Because since uh, L'Oreal has like many brands inside of it. Some of them are for for low low market and some of them are for high market. So they created L'Oreal Paris and it took almost fifty percent of total sales. Okay, so uh, this is this range fifty percent of total sales. So it's an important range for them. Okay. What, just I'm asking, they might not say here, but what income do you think is a middle range for L'Oreal who, who would buy these products? How much income are people earning? 
for this mastige. Uh, in which country? Any country. What's the minimum? My question is, what is the minimum income people have to have yearly to be able to that would buy these kind of uh, uh, products? You think about twenty thousand dollars? Okay. So. Uh, it mentions their best brand here, Lancome, which is 5% of the global premium beauty and care market. Do you know Lancome? Yes. Okay, so that's a uh, leading premium brand. Okay, the next part, uh, maybe it's marketing. This is reading, maybe it's marketing. Okay. Uh, so the first point is um, L'Oreal. Reinvigorate uh, re the brand and uh, revalue Maybelline's potential uh, with younger and less affluent uh, consumers. Uh, okay. And uh, they undertook a major overhaul on the operations and brand and uh, advertising. So, younger and less affluent consumers is yes. becoming more important. Yes. If they're going to the emerging markets, maybe that also will help, right? Yes. What was the next point? And uh, uh, take an overhaul on the operations and brand and advertising to make their, uh, uh, how do you say, restart uh, to the market, market uh, I mean the new, mar uh, new target market. Okay, so they, in order to do this, they're going to overhaul. Do you understand overhaul? Yes. What does it mean? Uh, to, uh, like, like, like fi fix me, or? Um, overhaul means like, go back and change it completely yeah. from the start. Yeah. Okay. And go back and change from the start. But this uh, is for Maybelline. Yeah. Uh, May Maybelline is just one brand within. Uh, it's talking about uh, Maybelline. Do you know Maybelline? Yes. So Maybelline is one company which they acquired in uh, 1996. Okay. So they overhauled uh, this brand in this way. Did it work well or not? Yes, it works well. Mm -hmm. uh, what numbers do they give? Um, so, uh, Maybelline was in 70 countries by uh, 1999 and uh, sales grew 93% 19, from 1996 to 2002. And, uh, it, can, it has become L'Oreal's passport to the conquest of new emerging markets. Okay, so we can see some number here for Maybelline sales grew 93% in this time. And it, this helps it to learn about, passport means really it helps it to learn about emerging markets, right? It helps L'Oreal to learn about emerging markets. So. If we go there with one brand, like Maybelline, then we can learn from our experience with Maybelline for our other brands. Right? What worked well, what didn't work well. So we can get an idea about what we are going to do for other brands. Okay, uh, just as we are going through, you can write down anything you think is relevant to our, prop, our focus on our, the issue we're focused on. Then the next one is a regionally focused rollout. So who was reading regionally focused rollout? Me. I gave usually two students. No, it was just me. In case one student who didn't uh, talk, right? <coughs> What does rollout mean? 
uh, introduction of a new product or launching? Yes, so when we have a carpet, we roll out the carpet. Do you understand? Roll out means starting something up. Right, so what can you tell us about this part? Um, the key is to accelerate the geographic rollout by tailoring product and price and so on. Mm -hmm. Acceleration of... So tailoring means, uh, you can say that making the product and price suitable for the market. Okay, anything else? Uh, local rivals have a better understanding of customer needs. Mm -hmm. So they, they can see that their local competition understand customer needs better. Do they have any example of that? Uh, yes, there was one. Can you find it? Uh, yeah, there was an example with Redcan in Brazil. They. they, they, they Yeah, they say about sales growth uh, over 20% because they were from Brazil or Latin America, I'm not sure. Okay, so uh, uh, with Renken, a uh, brand in Brazil, right? Yes. They, this was an American brand, so yeah. it was more suitable for the Latin America. So they use, uh, acquired a local brand, worked well. Okay, anything else? Um, innovation of, of a different kind of marketing approach. Innovation in marketing. So we can see the problem for the global company usually is this that the local competition understands the local customer better. Does that make sense? Yes. If you are Google and you want to become the search engine for Korea, but neighbor under, down understands Korean people better, right? They understand what Korean people like or want, how they want to see the information presented on the screen, right? For example, if I use uh, neighbor to search in Korean, I find it very frustrating because it always gives me the blog first. I don't want to read the blog. I don't trust the information on blogs. Often it's false, right? So I want to see the official website. But Korean people like reading blogs. Sometimes I have discussions with my wife because she read something on a blog that another Korean person wrote. And I tell her, but who is that person? How do they know? They just wrote that on a blog. And my wife says, no, but it's true. And I say, no, 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 no. You have to find the official website which says this is officially. Then it could be true, right? So I'm just giving an example. So if Google don't understand that Korean people like reading blogs written by other Korean people, uh, then they're, they're not going to design their web page properly for the Korean market, right? So uh, it's a similar challenge for L'Oreal as a global company, right? They have a disadvantage in that the local, especially in the professional the hairdressers, the, we see the example here for hairdressers, it means that the hairdressers could be quite fussy. They really want to special product for their customers, right? So if the local company understands them well, then L'Oreal has a disadvantage. So if they acquire a local company, then it can help them here. Okay. So uh, let's uh, look at the next part, telling the story. Who was reading this part? Yes? They invest here the heavenly 
So they invest heavily in advertising. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 20, uh, 2009, mm -hmm. uh, 4,560 uh, 4 million dollars they used in advertising. So 4.5 billion dollars yeah. in 2009. For consumer products, advertising is important, right? Yes. Anything else? No. <clears throat> so, any other part here under telling the story? Why why are they investing so heavily in advertising? Uh, they, they said they are in transition, so to manage this transition. Okay. So, uh, what is the transition? Uh, they have they have come from a world where the choices were limited uh, to one where the number of options is infinite. Okay, but what's the first the first line? What's changing in the market? What's that? What kind of transition? The very first line under telling the story. Yes. Only aging population uses it. Yes. So trends. <coughs> Transition is the changing. So we have aging customers in the West, a higher aging population. Uh, what else? Ethnic groups around the globe of hiring customers in the, in the East. Emerging markets growing interest in health and beauty care on men mm -hmm. all over the world. Emerging markets yeah, um, growing. And men. Mm, interest in health and good beauty. Yeah. Yes. So uh, those kinds of trends, right? Things are changing in the market. So they want they're investing heavily in advertising to take advantage of these uh, trends. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> So for example, in China, you can see in the exhibit, they're spending a lot of money on advertising, right? Mm. So, <coughs> why to take advantage of the growth in China, or emerging market. So, next part is fame by association. Anything else? And Maria was a major 
sponsor of the Ken Film Festival. Okay, yeah. so the sponsors of festivals. And work with the film's producer and studio to place their product into the film of television. So work with famous producers. Producers. Work with famous producers and studios. Oh. So they have kind of like product placement. But maybe we don't know it's L'Oreal, but anyway they're using L'Oreal. Okay, then uh, marketing as recruiting. Marketing as recruiting. Okay, then uh, next set, next part uh, from print to digital. The last part. Yes. Importance of marketing. Yes. They decide to chase or they will be in other ways for digital So they wanted to change to more digital. So they publicize the iPad, tablet, or YouTube and YouTube. So it is changed is is changed from traditional media to Okay, so can you give some more examples of their digital marketing? iPad and tablets. iPad and tablets? But the people, you mean people look at their iPad and tablets instead of the TV these days? Yes. So they are making some YouTube advertisements? Yeah, not print uh, publishers. Yes. Okay. So they have their own YouTube channel, right? Destination Beauty. Have you ever seen their YouTube channel? No? You did? What did you think about it? Talking about the in store experience, retail in 
in-store experience for customers, right? What about the in-store experience? They have a virtual personal stylist. Do you understand virtual? So they have a virtual personal stylist inside the store, right? What do they do? You can have a 3D scanning in, in, in store. <coughs> So you can get some scanning on, maybe it tells you about your skin or something like that, right? What your face type is like, what's good makeup for you, that kind of thing. Uh, so they also trained, for Facebook, trained their style, trained their some customers or stores, right? On, on Facebook marketing. Okay, anything else? Here? So, web, they got some bloggers. Okay? Do you understand bloggers? Do you understand to pitch products? Pitch is in baseball, it's throwing ball, right? Pitch a product means throw your product or promote your product. Do you follow any bloggers online? No? Some famous celebrity or somebody who writes their own blog or has their own Twitter, right? They, maybe they could uh, promote their new product, like they'll write, oh, I just used the L'Oreal face cream the other day. Ah, it's great. That's a kind of importance. Do you know Oprah in the US? As soon as Oprah recommends any book, usually it goes to the bestseller in the US on the New York Times. So if you could get Oprah to recommend your book, it could be really bad. You're going to be sell millions of copies of your book on her blog. So, did you know that already, that these, some people are getting paid to bloggers to promote? That's how they can get some money sometimes, promoting bloggers. So then, uh, just after the break, we can look at uh, L'Oreal's YouTube page. Right, so let's take a break now for 10 minutes. <coughs> What does this say? 
There was a huge major competitor yes. which was well, like bankrupt. 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 Oh,